welcome to the show. Oh, thanks for having me. So let's start with your instrument of choice. Uh, how did you first come to play the, the tenor sax? Well, um, I'm a second generation musician, so um, I've been playing music since I was a little, little kid. And I um, <clears throat> started off on drums and then went to piano when I was about nine. I started playing clarinet. And uh, when I was about 11, I got into jazz. And uh, Wayne Shorter was my favorite musician at that point. At 11 already? Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of a funny thing. And uh, my, my dad's a saxophone player, but, you know, he's kind of, he came up in the 70s where if you were a saxophone player, you had to be a doubler. So he wanted me to learn flute and clarinet first, so he wouldn't let me play the saxophone, you know, so that, that just added to the to the angst. Like, I really wanted to play the saxophone really, 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 really bad. And uh, one day he left his saxophone out, and I just picked it up and started playing it. And I figured out how to play this Wayne Shorter song. And uh, he heard me play the song, and he was like, oh, okay, okay. At like that, 11 or 11? Yeah, yeah, I was like 11 or 12, yeah, yeah. And that that was kind of the... Uh, how, do you, how do you see the saxophone musically? Like, how do you see the character of that instrument? Uh, what can it do that others can't? Um, <clears throat> I feel like the saxophone has a, has, a, has a connection to the human voice. That's, you know, I mean, you can get it with brass instruments, like when you add mutes and stuff like that, certain things. But the saxophone, I think it just... Something about the the, the the quality of it, it 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 really feels like a voice, hmm. you know. And yeah, maybe the breath it, in it and things yeah, like that. Yeah, it's the the way it vibrates. You know, something about it is. Um. So when you set out to make this album, this big expansive record, what what was the approach? What was the sound uh, that you were aiming for? Um. It was it was more of a thing that um. You know, I I spent most of my career making music for other people. Um. But I had this group of musicians that we had kind of created a sound that you know only kind of we were kind of doing and we a lot of us are second generation musicians and we just saw our fathers kind of like not really um document their music like you know there was just no way to hear it like we knew about it and other people in LA knew about it but there was no record to kind of go to they were also musicians that mainly supported others is that yeah, okay yeah yeah and so um we all just were like man we got to just get together and just record our music and just have it document it because it, we thought it was something special you know so that was like the main thing i i read that uh part of the approach was like a resistance to the the dimming of the mind that you see going on out there i mean the, as you said this album has a lot of information it's it, it's dense it's very musical um and it's a resistance to that dimming of the mind that, that you see going on out there what do you mean by that well it, it was a resistance to this notion that the minds are already dim <laughs> you know what i mean that like you can't make music like that because we would we live in la and it's like la is like a it's like like pretty much any any type of person you can think of that lives in the world. There's a representation of them in Los Angeles, and we would take this music to all these different places and to all these different people, and they would love it. And it was really you know we would play songs and odd meters and long solos and the whole nine yards. And like you know we take it to hip hop clubs, rock and roll clubs, jazz clubs, you know, any type of group you can think of, and um, they would get it. And so our thing was like. You know, this notion that, like, people can't understand music that has a, a bit more depth to it. We just, I, I always disagree with that. I feel like they just don't get that music, you know what I mean? But, so that was kind of, like, part of the thing, too, yeah. How does it feel to be proven right? I mean, people are loving this album. Yeah, it feels great. It feels yeah. great. It feels like, you know, we've been saying this forever. Like, man, if we could just get the music to the people, they would love it. If we could just get it to them. We, we had all kind of ideas of how we could do it and, you know, and then, you know, to, to have it be received the way it is, is is cool. Well, what do people tell you is resonating with them? Because as you said, this is resonating with all different corners of the, the music audience. What, what do people tell you that they love about it? Um, they say it has a combination of, 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 of known and unknowns. You know, I feel like they, they feel the music and it feels like something that they've, they've felt before, but there's elements to it that they haven't, that they've been missing in their musical lives. And, and so I, I think they have like a, you know, this sounds familiar to me, but it's like it's something that I've never heard. That's what they, people say to us a lot. That is pretty much the sweet spot, isn't it? With music, enough familiarity for people to approach it, but s enough surprise for people to stay yeah. interested. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, one of the things that brought you into the spotlight recently was your work with Kendrick Lamar on his incredible album, uh, To Pimp a Butterfly. Uh, what was that experience like for you on a personal level working on uh, that project? Uh, it was amazing. I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of Kendrick's, and... Um you know, I, I've known about I've known about his music for a long time because he's worked with people that I've known since I was a kid, and so they've always told me like, oh man, Kendrick is like a genius, 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 genius. And so when I went to the studio and like really saw it firsthand, I was like, yep, 
There's, dude, dude is a straight up genius. <laughs> I mean, this is, it's such a landmark uh, album. At the same time, there it's like Fort Knox around the process. I talked to a singer songwriter uh, just a couple days ago who was brought in for some sessions, and she said it's one of the most amazing things she's been a part of. Um, at the same time, they keep it very serious and very locked down. It, was uh, that your experience getting <laughs> getting involved? Yeah, man. It was like it was like Michael Jackson was in that joint, man. It, like, give your your ID card and <laughs> it was a serious I had to like write all the music there I couldn't take it home so I was like that was a kind of unique experience for me because usually like, when I do arranging and writing like that I, I take the music and go home and then bring it back it was like nah <laughs> you, you go over there and write no it. music leaving the studio nah, nah. Uh, just like Kendrick your music uh, makes a political statement um, it includes many references to African American history. Uh, I actually want to play a passage here from your track, The Message. So how do you convey political themes through instrumental music? How does that process work for you? Well, uh, instrumental music, and I think music in general, it, it, it really communicates, it can communicate on two different levels. You can use words with titles and lyrics to, to um, give someone a very particular message, like, you know, <laughs> turn left, turn right, go straight, and then you're running to the store. But what I think music, the real beauty of music and the real art of music, what it really communicates is your experience and your feelings, um, like who you are, what you are, what you've been through. And, you know, part of any political movement is the experience of the people who are basically going through whatever this struggle is. And so with my music and anyone who's making music that doesn't have lyrics, what we're communicating is what my experience has been. And it's like an experience is more than just a recap recap of events. events yeah it's what that event did to you and what it makes you feel you know and um and the whole gap the whole span of that which is like it's not all negative it's not you know it's not all positive it's there's love in there there's hate there's there's pain there's there's joy there's it's all in there and when you when you take that into account with little small messages like a title and it it kind of gives you a, an ex expression of a different kind of communication that that, that is kind of almost deeper than words in mm. a way. Like you can't really so tell someone that. So the title can give you a bit of context, but then the music says things that words can't. Yeah, yeah. It's like I'm listening to John Coltrane, and it's like all of a sudden I can like feel what it was like to be alive in 1963, even though he's not telling me what it was like to be alive in 1963, but I can feel it. And it's like, oh man, I can feel the, the, I can feel it. I can just feel the struggle. So I think that's the same thing that. Well, I'm you're speaking to, to this moment. Speaking of 1963, Black Lives Matter, this movement, this moment right now. How do you see the connection between what you're playing and that movement? Because I'm a, I'm a, I'm the, the prime example of that movement. I mean, I'm a, I'm a large, dark-skinned African American male. So it's like I've lived with that, that reality of the fact that you know. In the U.S., like, I am a threat to law enforcement, even though, you know, I was a straight-A student, you know, practicing saxophone 12 hours a day, no threat, but I am a threat. And, like, people don't realize what that does to you, you know, especially, like, when you live in the, like, when you live in the inner city, it's like, you know, I can't really go over there with them, and, like, the police are against me, too. Like, mm. you know, that, that that notion of, like, seeing a cop and it, like, kind of terrifies you I, I, it's a hard thing to kind of convey but it's just like but through music you can convey that tension yeah yeah that yeah. tension and that release of like you know kind of knowing in yourself that's not what it is you know in terms of activism i've read you say some things about uh, education and public education that's close to your heart and that actually comes out of your own experience what's been your experience with public education that, that informs your your politics around that uh, I mean, it's <clears throat> a bit complicated because um, 
you know, I I was a, you know, I was one of the kids that got bust out. You know, I was one of the, part of the magnet program. I don't know if you guys have that here, but like in in the states, like there's a, we had a huge problem of inequality within the, um, you know, just the resources in the educational system. So basically, what if it happened is if you're a little kid and you tested high, <laughs> and you lived in the city. If you're playing Wayne Shorter when you're 11, for example, yeah, <laughs> yeah, then yeah. you got bussed out to another school, and that was all fine and good for me when I was 11 years old. But then as I got older, I realized like, wait a minute, we're all my friends that like didn't get bussed out, and I'm like. You know, I would see them later on. I'm like, you know, I, I'm coming home from school with literally too many books to carry. I can't carry them all at once. And, like, they don't have one book. And I'm like, that doesn't really seem like it's cool. They're not dumb. They just didn't score high on this little test. So they don't get the same education that I get mm. that everyone gets over here. It just doesn't really seem equal. Uh, unfortunately, we just have to wrap up here. But um, I know that your name, uh, th- th- your father named you Kamasi, and that uh, speaks to bringing people together. And on this album, uh, you explore metaphors for for destiny, for your own destiny and, and growth. How do you see your mission uh, as an artist? Um, <clears throat> I mean, I think as an artist, all you really can do is express yourself, be who you are. So, like, I have to work myself as a person. And I, you know, I, I try to grow myself and try to be aware and try to be a part of the world in a way that I want to be a part of the world. And then my music, I just, it's like I just make myself a good person and then show people the person that I am. And it's not, that's kind of like the, that's the cycle. That's your approach. Me. Yeah. It's beautiful. Well, thank you so much for joining me here. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me.